there Facebook it is Vanessa here again your speaker trainer and coach from live love give and today I'm coming to you just at the end of the day it's been a pretty crazy and hectic day today and I wanted to make sure I got my live done before the Sun goes down and I have to like sit in the dark again but I really have this message for you guys today um, which is all about the concept of fair value exchange and it's a concept that I was first kind of introduced to um, through the work of Dr. John D. Martini um, and just some of the things that he's sort of said um, that I've kind of picked up on I can see how this plays out um, quite a lot and it doesn't just have to stay in the economic market and so that's what I want to talk to you guys today about which is asking you the question is there fair value exchange in your relationship dynamics now this is kind of a tricky topic to thought to think about exchange with because on one side um, we really don't want to be um, having transactional relationships we absolutely want to have our relationships be a place where we just endlessly give you know and we don't have to think about giving and taking and holding back and all of that sort of stuff like that is the ideal but what I'm trying to play around with today in my concepts is this concept around bringing fair value exchange into our relationship dynamics without making them transactional and it's might <laughs> it might be pretty tough for me to, to kind of talk this out but as you guys have been following me for a while now know all of my concepts why I love so much that you guys um, you know tune in and watch these messages is because this is how I make my ideas work is by talking them out so the two kind of concepts that I want to play around with and kind of juggle with live with you guys today is the concept of fair value exchange with the concept of not making our relationships um, a vehicle of a transaction right so the ideal is is that we can have a grand vision for our relationship dynamics no matter whether they are our intimate relationships our friendships our family relationships our working relationships whatever they are right we want to have vision you know you can have whatever you want so far as you are clear so that's why we really want to have that that vision we want to dream big we want to create something extraordinary not just ordinary and so Whenever I get to the concept of relationship and, I, and I'm helping people or I'm working on my own vision around relationship, the very thing I want to do is make it extraordinary and I want to get to a position in that relationship where there is no tallying up who did what, when, you know. Um, but we also, um, you know, have to have a way of knowing that this is a person that we can ultimately just give our all to not be taken advantage of and not just be a doormat or get walked all over or whatever but actually find somebody who will meet us up on that on that higher level of playing field that that higher standard of the game you know um, who is just as willing to give their all to us and when you can find and establish that kind of connection where you're both trying to out give to one another um, that is the ideal but we don't always start there and because of our journeys because of the human beings that we are you know we go through different relationships struggles and challenges and we get hurt over here and stuff happens over here that makes it painful and then we want to avoid and then we get scared and then we have all these protection mechanisms that make us hold back and sit back and let other and somebody else go first right and then we're both sitting back and nobody's going and we're just holding on to all this love and everything that we have to give and we're not actually getting over the line and being a leader in this relationship and then we wonder why we've ended up in poor quality kind of low level just ordinary just kind of the norm kind of connection that doesn't go the depths that we're always holding something back from rather than something extraordinary all right so that's the first kind of concept that I'm always talking about you know getting to that place where you find somebody who is willing to give and exceed expectations and all of it with you so that you never ever ever have to worry about oh like I gave so much and and what have they given and all of this sort of stuff until you kind of get to this place and then we all know where that ends because we've all been in those relationship dynamics right not all of us have had the opportunity to be in an extraordinary quality of relationship where we're both trying to out give to one another 
where that's the only competition that takes part in that relationship dynamic. So what I want to try and um, add to this equation is talking about fair value exchange. Now, fair value exchange is something that, you know, tends to be spoken about in the economic market. So whenever we have, you know, um, say a new product comes into the market, um, you know, it's going to kind of, the market kind of sorts its way out. You know, like um, a product that's not adding enough value for what it's asking is going to get wiped out, right? Nobody, Nobody's going to be continuously buying that product, right? So, um, and on the flip side, if a product adds immense value for what it's asking in exchange, you know, um, it's going to be demanded more, much more, right? So, um, you know, it's going to work itself out in the market. There's going to be a working out of a fair value exchange in terms of price and product. And how I want to, I kind of want to bring this into our relationship dynamics without making it transactional. And like I said, I'm not sure how I'm going to make this happen, but there has been um, this kind of feeling within me that, um, you know, when we can look at our relationships and go for something extraordinary, we also need a way of being able to judge and gauge what is extraordinary, what's moving in the direction of extraordinary, what has the capability of being extraordinary, and what's just not, right? So this is a concept that I feel can come into play when we're working towards something more extraordinary in our relationships is what's the value exchange here? Is it fair? Because at the end of the day, if one person feels like they're bringing more to the table than the other, there's going to be a lack of respect going on um, for that other person. So the person who believes they're bringing more to the table than the other one, they're going to lose respect for that other person. And on the flip side, if one person feels like they're not bringing um, as much um, to the table or this other person is bringing way more to the table than them, they're going to lose self-respect. And as we all know, and it's kind of common sense, it's pretty difficult to create any kind of great, extraordinary dynamic in relationship when there's a lack of respect, either of the self or of the other person um, disrespecting the other person. Or usually what happens is there's the combination of the two going on, where the, self dis the disrespecting self um, is coupled with somebody who's also disrespecting them, and they're both on this kind of same playing field in terms of, um, this person who's disrespecting themselves is not bringing as, as much to the table as the person who is disrespecting the other person. Hope that all made sense. But at the end of the day, we get this kind of like, you know, this kind of almost like a dictatorship, you know, and we get like this lack of fair value exchange. And it might not be that that's actually the case, but the perception of the relationship is, is that one party is bringing more to the equation than this party. And that creates the imbalance. And whenever we have an imbalance in our connections, we ain't got love, right? We've got, we actually are in some sort of transaction where somebody feels like they're, you know, they're coming up short and the other person feels like, oh my God, this person's going to leave me. So the person who thinks they're not bringing as much to the equation, um, or they, they may not be, but like maybe that's just the perception, um, they are going to hold on to this person for as, as strongly as possible, right? Because they're like, I don't want to lose this person who adds so much value to my life. Who would I be without them? And this other person who feels like has the perception that they're bringing way more to the equation than this, this person here, they're going to want to escape. They're going to want to go, you know what? Like you're draining my energy, um, you know, and they're going to seek trying to kind of escape this needy person who's not bringing enough to the equation, who's kind of robbing them of their value. And can you see how this can, relationship can play out? And you might have been on either side of that, even in the same relationship. We can kind of, you know, shift and change to who's adding more value, who's bringing more to the equation, lack of self-respect or respect of the other, and we create this complete disharmony. So what I'm trying to pin together right now is um, something that I'm trying my hardest to be much more intentional about, which is to aim to add massive value wherever I go, whoever I'm dealing with, my aim is to add maximum value as possible 
um, because in that way, I'm going to up level my ability to get into fair exchange, depending on who I'm with. And if I'm adding more value than who's in front of me, at least I'm being a leader and I'm showing them what's possible. And the ones who want to grow, the ones who want extraordinary quality of relationship, they're going to come up and meet me. You know, and we're going to, I'm going to be that piece in the market that makes that other piece come up and come up to this fair value exchange rather than us kind of dull ourselves down, which is what I always used to do um, so that so as to not threaten people, so as to, you know, not threaten any sort of connections. I know where that leads. It leads to a pretty low you know, less than substantial kind of marketplace that I don't want to be in, you know? And so we have to be willing to be that leader in the marketplace, you know, wherever that is, in the relationship marketplace, you know, to add maximum value, to be intentional about how can I show up here? How can I add even more value? How can I be even more authentic? How can I give and contribute at my highest capacity in this moment, in this relationship. And in that way, we will up the level of the playing field in our market, in our relationship dynamics, in our business relationships, in our health, in all areas, you can use this concept to up level and raise your standards, but also be a leader and attract the kind of people who are absolutely looking to grow and progress that is how you enter fulfillment. That is how you generate the extraordinary. And that is, I know for you guys who are here watching a video like this, I absolutely know that that is what you guys are after as well. And I so appreciate each and every one of you guys um, because, uh, you know, to me, um, nothing is more important than our ability to grow and contribute and connect, you know? And so um, if we can have people, if we can all take it upon ourselves to be the leaders in the marketplace, to exceed expectations in terms of fair value exchange, instead of trying to like just hold back and bring the market down, let's be the leaders and that and know that when we step up and when we give our all, we will use that as our greater greatest filter in all areas of life and in particular our relationship dynamics. People will go, whoa, like she's adding so much value or he's adding so much value. I want to do that too. I want to contribute as much as, as they do to me, you know, and they'll come up here and they will, will expand, will grow, will raise our standards um, uh, rather than, um, you know, staying stuck in this dynamic, which is just not going to get you towards love and depth and connection, just going to end up in disrespect of the self or the other, um, and definitely not lowering ourselves um, to play small and pe keep people comfortable either. So I really, really hope that um, me talking this out has actually made sense to you guys. I so appreciate each and every one of you guys. I hope you realize that. Um, I hope you realize that a huge part of what actually helps me grow and evolve is me talking with you guys. And I hope you've dropped in some comments so that we can engage in this conversation together um, because I am such a person who needs to kind of get it all out like the extrovert that I am and get it all out here in the real world kind of as I'm talking, make sense of it and um, start a conversation with you guys so I can get some more feedback, I can get some different perspectives and that really, really supports me on my journey. So I just want to make sure that you guys know that every single day you are serving me. So there's definitely a fair value exchange going on and um, I definitely, definitely want to check in with you guys and see who's been able to join me today. I have got Phil and Sanula and Belinda, beautiful to see you, and uh, Muli and Hassani and Emmett and Alex and Frank and Sharat and uh, Nirupuma, Nirupama. I love having you here. And uh, Michael's here and Bikram and Nikki and uh, Ty and Sam's in the house. I love it. Thank you, Sam. I just finished at the gym, so I'm kind of feeling a bit wrecked. But thank you for your amazing compliment. And uh, Ra's here and Kathy and Belinda. Yes, relationships should be 100% from each person, not 50-50. Boom shakalaka. Absolutely. Um, yes, I completely agree, Belinda. And also, you know, 
That's part of the beauty of relationship is that we're not always going to be on fire in our hundred percent at times. And so, you know, at some times, you know, if I'm in relationship with somebody at some times, I'm going to have to pick up their extra 20% and other times they're going to have to pick that up for me, you know, and we can balance each other out. And that's part of the beauty of relationship. But the aim of the game is to absolutely do what you say there, Belinda, a hundred percent. Take full responsibility for yourself or where the relationship is at. Know that you are contributing, you're co-creating the dynamic that you have at play. Don't blame anybody. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame the other person. Take 100% responsibility from both sides and you'll make some shifts and changes and get intentional. I love that, Belinda. And uh, your base is here. And Sam, I'm loving that you're loving today's topic. And Jim's here. And Luz, you rock, my friend. And uh, Vanessa's in the house. I love seeing you here. And Adrian, great to see you. And Rowini, awesome. And Paul and uh, Vanessa, it's sad when relationships turn into scorekeeping. But I guess if one person in the relationship changes, then maybe things can shift. Boom. Absolutely, Vanessa. So, feels weird saying Vanessa, but I love it. Um, so, um, yeah, that's what I'm kind of getting to is, you know, we don't want transactional relationships. Like whenever you're focused and paying attention to what other people aren't doing, you're simultaneously stifling your own growth that you could be shifting and gearing into you actually being that higher version and being that walking example of what you really want to create, um, in your relationship, you know? So, Whatever you feel is missing, step more into that in your relationship. Have a conversation too, you know? Like people aren't mind readers, you know? They're living in their own subjective world. Even if we're in relationship with them, we need to be able to have the courage to, you know, communicate openly, but you've gotta be clear. You know, most people are getting around in their relationships they have zero idea about what they really wanna to work toward. They just know what they don't want. And then they can't communicate um, in a way that allows their partner who's living their subjective experience to actually win with them and grow with them and know what their needs are. And so we end up in this kind of weird battle where we're living in our own separate world. We're not able to communicate because we don't have anything to communicate about because we don't actually understand where we're going or what we want. And we get into this like you know, just this headache from two people who have all the love in the world to give and they just want to give it and they just want to be loved and accepted and appreciated for all of who they are. But we get into these weird dynamics that drain our energy and, you know, we end up sacrificing the very thing that we're trying so badly to have and to have to um, create in our lives. So completely resonate with what you're saying there Vanessa thanks so much for sharing and Edgar's here and Damien and Jason and Ava and Heinz and Terry awesome Sam what about other things um they bring and you can't put value on them I got an example if you want yes drop some examples Sam I'd love that and yeah that was actually something that thank you for the reminder because I wanted to dive into that because let's take a really simple easy example it might sound a bit 1950s but let's just roll with it so let's just take a relationship dynamic where say um, the man is the main breadwinner and he brings all the finances into the relationship and the woman, um, you know, she looks after the children, but she's not working. And this can create this kind of dynamic where if people have a perception of value, which is um, money is value and all else is not really that valuable, right? then this guy bringing all the money in, say that's his perception, say that's both of their perceptions, they're, they're seeing value exchange as money, um, then this the man who's bringing the money in starts to sort of feel like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this all. You know, you'd have nothing without me. And the woman is like, oh my God, like I'd have nothing without you. You know, instead of being able to see all of the different value pieces that we bring, that doesn't have to just come down to money. You know, um, you know, bringing up beautiful children, giving her all, um, you know, um, you know, whatever. There's so many different ways, emotional support, you know, um, you know, all sorts of different things, right? There's so many different avenues. So what we need to do is expand, expand our mind's capacity of um, and perception as to what value is. And guaranteed, if you're there, if you're there for a period of time, there is 
fair value exchange probably going on. Um, you just need to shift your perception on it. Um, but oftentimes it's really just a shift in perception that will allow you to, to get back onto an equal playing field so you can actually experience love and depth without disrespect of the self or the other. And, um, and that is so, so important. Um, so that's just one way of looking at it. But yes, I so appreciate that, Sam. And Terry, thanks for the positivity and being easy on the eye. Oh, thanks, Terry. Have a good day. Um, hope you have a good day as well, Terry. Thank you so much for being here. And Belinda, and you, oh, and you add so so much value to all of us um, with your daily Facebook lives. Belinda, you're touching my heart, my friend. I so appreciate you. We need to catch up. Um, but that's so, so beautiful. Thank you, my friend. And Slogan is here. And Vanessa. Thank you for your awesome message today. Vanessa, you are so welcome. I'm really grateful that it was um, of value to you. Me talking this stuff out that's of top of mind. And uh, Ismail's here. And Sandra and Sam. Um, love that being a leader contributing um, limitlessly without measure and comparison. Absolutely. But you know what? It's this weird middle ground, you know, where we need to be able to kind of judge because if you can be in relationship right take this as an example so if you're in relationship you've got clarity of vision you want something extraordinary you have got the courage to give your all contribute your all in all areas in that relationship and if you do that for so long and this other person who you're with um for whatever reasons of their own they're not coming up and meeting you at that higher playing field they're just kind of sitting back and taking it all in most people, however, will come up. And that's in human nature. We, we, we get given value. We want to give it back like it's human nature. But we're going to run into different relationship dynamics where that doesn't end up happening. There needs to be some sort of gauge on that to be like, okay, you know what? Like, this isn't a fair value exchange. And um, I'm going to continue. I want to give my all. I don't want to have to hold back. And, you know, for whatever reason, this person's not going to come up and meet this standard and grow with you. At some point, you have to be willing to kind of leave that behind so that you can open yourself up to um, attracting and connecting with somebody who is absolutely, even if they're not as high as you are right now in terms of your giving, they'll be attracted to that. They'll be inspired by that, by your leadership, and they'll come and meet you on that path and grow together. You have to be, you know, kind of willing to let go of the good so that you can absolutely have the great. And at some point, there needs to be some sort of measurability in that. Not quite sure how it works. I know Tony Robbins will talk into when relationships are kind of on the brink of divorce or breakup. Um, you know, he'll get people to work with their six human needs. Exactly what I focused on in this um, month's uh, monthly masterclasses with the Limitless Potential Academy. Um, so you'll want to jump on board this, particularly if you want to take your relationship to a whole new level. Um, but ultimately, he'll get people to focus on out giving to one another through the use of their six human needs. And in particular, the hierarchy of your partner's needs. If you get in the monthly masterclasses, you get access to the test, you get access to all the breakdowns, interpretations, and a pathway forward for working with um, yourself and your partner on this. Just as a side note, so link is up actually up above if you want to join that. But ultimately, he'll get people to identify how they're going to take, you know, each of the six human needs to a 10 out of 10 for their partner. They're going to break it down. They're going to make it actionable and commit to out giving on that level for a minimum of three months. That's what Tony Robbins works with, 90 days. And if, if at that point you've totally given your all for 90 days and your partner has still not come up and still not working toward that with you, for him, that's what Tony Robbins says as a gauge, as a measurability. Um, might be time that you actually move on from that relationship and at least you will have built the muscle within um, to be able to take that into a new relationship and continue giving your all. So I really hope that that serves and thank you so much Sam and um, your guest is here and Sam, um, some people bring in more energy, attention, creativity, caring, sex, emotional support, family contribution, mentoring, kids, love and passion. Boom, you've got it, Sam. I so appreciate all of those amazing examples. And you know, it's so subjective. You know, it's so, so, so subjective. So when you work, you know, your 
in that relationship, you're working with that person or you know, helping um, other people, you've got to be able to bring that out in terms of their life, in terms of who they are. And you know, we add maximum value in the hierarchy of our values, you know. Um, so you it's really important to also identify and know yourself, know what your highest values are, and know that you are going to contribute at your highest capacity. Um, in the hierarchy of your values as well. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, Sam, I know you've done a lot of work because you're in the eight week program. So you already know your values and you'll be continuing to clarify them at deeper and deeper levels. And I so appreciate all your examples, Superstar, my teammate. I love it. And Huss, so good to see you, Huss. Um, if you try to communicate with someone who doesn't communicate, how do you make that work? Is it best to keep taking 100% ownership and not think about what they're not doing? No way, Huss, exactly. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. You know, we need to get to a point where we need to be in relationship with somebody who's willing to meet us there. And over a period of time, you might need to, um, you know, kind of, articulate that on a subjective level as to what your kind of limit is um, but like I mentioned Tony Robbins would keep it to 90 days of you out giving to your partner and um, being the leader in the relationship and if they're not coming up to meet you if they're not going to communicate you can't have relationship with anybody who can't communicate and you can't sit back and do nothing and hold back and say I'm not going to communicate until they communicate or whatever the thing is that you're missing right you have to fully step up be the leader you have to give exactly what you want to receive um, and be willing to do that for a specified period of time to make it measurable to see what the limit is um, and from that point you know you have to be willing to walk away from the relationships that aren't going to come up and meet you on that level and a little secret as well sometimes it takes you and your willingness to leave and leave it behind to actually wake people up to grow all right and I'm not saying that that's always the case and I'm not saying that it's not always too late at that point either um, you know I can speak from my own perspective and a lot of particularly women um, you know once they reach that point of break you know there's generally can be the point of no return, right? So sometimes that person shifting and changing can be kind of too late for the scenario, but other times it's not. You know, I really do believe that if two people take 100% responsibility for where the relationship is at and they do not blame themselves or the other and they're willing to leave the past in the past and look towards a compelling future, anything is possible. But until both people are willing to do that, sorry, you can't. The relationship is co-created. And that's part of what's so scary for most people is that they're not in control of it. You know, and so we've got to make sure that we're both on the same page and willing to move in the same direction. And it might take a period of time for you as the leader to give your all without holding back to up level that other person, inspire them to step up to that level. And if not, we've got to be willing to walk away. So really hope that that um, serves you, Huss. I so appreciate your questions and for you being here, as you know. And uh, Paulie's here. Awesome. And Belinda, never dull your sparkle so that others can shine. Boom. I love that. Um, it reminds me of what I heard um, Lisa Nichols say a while ago, and I just love it. She's like, you know, um, I'm going to butcher what she said, but you guys might have heard it as well. But she said something like, don't dull, dull your shine down, you know, ca carry around a bunch of sunglasses and throw those out to the people who can't handle it. So she said it in such a way better, cooler way. Um, but I just loved that. And it's so on point. Thanks, Belinda. And Filippo's here. And Sam, relationship topic is your baby. I felt your genius and inspiring ins inspiration rocking. Thank you, Sam. I love relationship. Oh, my God. I could talk about it all day if you guys would let me, but I also want to like mix it up a bit. So thank you, Sam. I so appreciate you. And uh, Wang, absolutely awesome. I'm so grateful to hear that, my friend. And Belinda, another Belinda in the house. I love it. And Minaj is here. I'm doing really well. Hope you are as well. And Katrina, great. And Adrian and Julie, awesome. 
So guys, I really, really hope that today's message has served you. I think I'm just getting the last tiny little bit of sun before it goes really dark. So good thing I'm signing off pretty shortly. Um, but I really hope that today's message has served you, resonated with you, empowered you. And I hope also, if you guys don't know much about the six human needs, or even if you know the six human needs inside out, I'm telling you, because I've been to a lot of Tony Robbins um, events, I've studied his work for the past six years. Believe me, I will help you take it to a whole new level in the very first monthly masterclass, which is available to you guys right now. This will take you to a whole new level of self-awareness. And if you want an extraordinary quality of relationship, this is the place I always start with my couples coaching. So guarantee you can get it for like literally $19. And I, I do this with my coaching clients. You know, that's like $5,000, you know, so I guarantee you, you will get maximum value in this for anybody who wants to up level, be the leader and create something extraordinary. The link is up above. And I so appreciate each and every one of you guys for joining me today. Thank you so, so much. As always, I'm spending, I'm, spending i'm sending you all of my love light blessings gratitude energy enthusiasm everything extraordinary coming to you to wherever you are in the world today i hope it's beautiful amazing and extraordinary and i can barely get my words out i think i'm just exhausted my back is really sore did a massive gym session just before this um but i so appreciate you guys and the last little comments before i sign off you're so welcome, Adrian. Thank you so much for being here. And Hyungle and Stephen, um, thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys catch the recording and get a ton of value from today's message. And uh, Alex, thumbs up to you, my friend. And Huss, that was great. Thank you. So grateful to hear that, Huss. And Sam, your enthusiasm and inspiration is contagious now. I'll sleep like a baby. Boom, a Gemini baby like me. I love it, Sam. All right, guys, thank you so, so much for joining me, for you know contributing to the conversation. I love and appreciate each and every one of you guys immensely, and I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. Much love.